My mouth-watering, map-hopping adventure has taken me to the furthest corners of terra firma. After amazing adventures in the worlds of Alaska and the sun-drenched cities of Israel, I am now flying towards the increasingly popular flavours of Vietnam. Thank you. I've been watching Vietnamese restaurants pop up all over Britain, and because of the preparation and the portion control, it appeals to the health conscious. I mean, look at this for instance. Prawns, carrots, bok choy, cabbage and noodles. And this, this is airline food. My first stop is Hanoi, and with plenty to fit into their day, the Vietnamese spring into action at 6am. And by 7am, the street food is ready to go. Here they're cooking Vietnam's national dish, and I can't wait to try it, because it's meant to have originated right here in Hanoi. Pronounced pho in the UK and pho here in Vietnam, the dish is a rich chicken, or in this case, beef broth combined with rice noodles and fresh herbs. Thank you very much. Now this dish is taking Britain by storm at the moment and a lot of the sandwich bars are actually selling it. And essentially it's, it's such a wonderful thing to eat. It's simple, clean and straight to the point and extremely good for you. And here they eat it for breakfast. What a great way to galvanise the stomach for rush hour. There are about 4 million people live in Hanoi and they're just under four million mopeds. I mean, they are everywhere, and it's all a bit scary, but one of the best ways to get around is one of these, this is a cyclo. After just surviving the mayhem on Hanoi streets, the old quarter, with its abundant street food, was like walking through a super intense farmer's market. There's bikes coming past me with everything on, from washing machines to hot food, it's crazy. In the UK, you might nip out for your giant soft peanut cookie or your Mars bar, but here, this is a sweet snack. They've got a boiled eel, and they've also got a crispy fried eel, which has been salted. Look at that. Fantastic. Real street food. Really delicious. Gaman, come on. Gaman, Gaman. This is the best roasted meat shop in Hanoi. We've got roast duck. They've got pigeons, these little pigeons here, and even the tongues don't get wasted, they roast those as well. But as soon as someone sets up a great place like this, crossroad will be a copycat one. And the Vietnamese obsession with good food doesn't stop there. This is Chaga Street, an entire street named after a fish dish first served up in this restaurant over 100 years ago. And along with the fish, rice noodles play a pivotal role. In the UK we eat huge amounts of wheat, but they hardly eat any wheat here in Vietnam. It's all rice-based. Complementing the fish and noodles, classic Vietnamese ingredients, including basil, coriander and peanuts, are all mixed up with fresh chilli. Wow. I can see why they named the street after this beautiful fish. Look at that. Continuing on with my tour de force of Vietnamese food, it was time to try something a little more jungle. Eating snake in Vietnam is a bit like eating lobster in the UK. It's a delicacy and it is quite expensive. However, one thing you can guarantee that it is absolutely fresh. I'm pretty sure that's a cobra. And, and he's playing with it. Now this is snake wrapped in betel leaves, and this is a snake soup. Now I've never had this before, but it is delicious, I have to say. In Vietnam, snake is considered a celebration meal. Down the road though, expat restaurateur Dan serves up typical Vietnamese snacks. But if you're expecting a packet of crisps, you haven't been paying attention. So Dan, what have we got here then? Well, this is a little bit of silkworm chrysalids. Yep. Uh, we've got uh, some sandworms. Over here we've got some locusts. But it was the scorpions that had me a little worried. This thing is live and I'm still not quite sure if it is dangerous. But he's huge, isn't he? Imagine, oh, go on, get me. <laughs> <laughs> and in typical Vietnamese style, the insects take no time to prepare. As this day has gone on, the food has got steadily more exotic. And I'm finishing with a fried scorpion. Hmm. A bit like twiglets, really. With food on every corner and mopeds speeding at you from every direction, it was time to leave Hanoi, a wonderful blend of chaos and cuisine.
which is why my next destination seemed like a dream. Out of my window was Hoi An, famed for its peaceful, natural beauty. I had arrived in the historical centre of central Vietnam. Made famous during the Vietnam War, this beach was the landing point for the American military. Now redeveloped into a resort, the executive chef Conrado was on hand to discuss local cooking and those all-important herbs. So what are the three main herbs that you use here? Uh, coriander, uh, basil and mint. They're really important in Vietnamese cooking. With the herbs picked, Conrado whipped me up a cao lao, a local speciality made with barbecued pork and noodles. So basically this dish is a very quick dish to prepare. Prepare it in about five, mi five, five to ten minutes, finish, done. And you, you use hardly any salt in cooking here, do you? No. No, uh, Vietnamese food is mostly seasoned with, uh, with uh, fish sauce. You know, every dish I've had since I've been in Vietnam has been completely different. But there's an underlying theme amongst them all, and that is clean, fresh, simple flavours. And you know what? You just can't beat it. It was finally time for me to put what I've learnt here into practice. After hitching a lift into the beautiful town centre to have a nose around, I was off to catch myself a fish to cook with. On the outskirts of Hoi An, in a rustic fishing village, I met local tour guide Jack and his family. So, this is my mum. Hello. Mr. Rouse. Hello, pleased to meet you. This is my father, Captain Cook. Yeah. Captain okay. Cook, yeah. you're the man, yeah? yeah. They were very keen for me to learn how to fish Vietnamese style, so we hit the river and headed out to a traditional fishing hotspot. The leaf hat fitted perfectly. Throwing the net though, well, let's just say I was lucky to catch just one fish. But as Jack explained, fishing isn't the only thing these canals are known for. So the Viet Cong lived in here, in the wall? Yes, they did throw the leaf in the palm tree, behind the palm tree, underwater, and they used a bamboo stroke yep. to breathe like this. And how many years? About 14 years, that's survived. 1961 to 1974. While Jack and I explored the canals, his dad prepared my mullet, ready for cooking. This is a grey mullet, so you'd get this in the UK. It's a really meaty fish, as you can see. Look at that, it's a beautiful colour. Flavour the water with pepper, soy and chilli. Stuff the fish with fresh basil before placing it into the warm water to steam. We're going to cook that for around about, probably, three to four minutes. For something to dip the fish into, I'm using fish sauce with a spoonful of sugar. And then I'm going to add a little bit of fresh chilli adding a touch of soy sauce and Conrado's basil. So there it is. There's my steamed Vietnamese style grey mullet. Look at this. Well, there we are, folks. Wow. That's, that's Have a tuck in, tell what you think. Try, try it. Mm. Oh. Is it delicious? Excellent. Excellent. Hai Ba Yo! Well, that went down well. From Hanoi to Hoi An, this trip has introduced me to a very welcoming and happy people with a passion for food. Next stop, southern Vietnam, and I can't wait. <laughs>